Hello dear learners, welcome you all to e-learning platform. Now we are in week 7. And in this week you will learn Act 3, Act 4 and Act 5 of Bhalpuni, written by Ben Johnson. Me as usual with you throughout this lecture. This week you will learn four lessons. In lesson one you will learn the paraphrase of Act 3 with analysis. In lesson two you will learn the paraphrase of Act 4 and in lesson three you will learn the paraphrase of Act 5. And in lesson four I will conclude with a critical appreciation of the play Valpony. Lesson one paraphrase of Act 3. Act 3, Scene 1 In the street, Mosca delivers a soliloquy in which he expresses his joy at the success of his plot. He calls himself a subtle snake in Act 3, Scene 1 and talks of falling in love with himself. He delights in being a parasite. He elaborates on the true art of parasitism, which is not merely begging for money but rather manipulating people. Actress in 2. Carbaccio's son Bonario enters and scorns Mosca for his sloth and means of feeding. Mosca begins to cry and Bonario regrets being so severe. Mosca admits that because he was not born rich he has done dishonorable things in order to get by. Mosca tells Bonario that he will bring him to witness his fa father disin disinherit him. Act 3, Scene 3 and 4 At Volpone's house, Androgino, Nano and Castrone are performing a duty to entertain Volpone. The disparse and a knock comes at the door. Lady would be politic. Lady would be politic enters and summons two servant women to help her bring. Volpony makes sneering side comments about Lady would be's garrulousness while she rambles and about her study of medicine and poetry. Actress in 5, 6, and 7. Mosca enters and at Bolpun is begging, shoots Lady would be away by telling her that he saw her politic with another woman on a gondola. Mosca later commands that it is those who have the most freedom who are the most jealous. Lady would be Politic presents Volpony with a cap she made herself. She leaves, re enters momentarily, and then leaves again. Mosca enters at Volpony, at Volpony's begging. She was lady would be away by telling her that he saw her politic with another woman on a gondola. Mosca later comments that it is those who have the most freedom who are the most jealous. Lady would be present Valpony with a cap she made herself. She leaves, re-enters momentarily and then leaves again. Mosca brings in Bonario and hides himself so that he will hear his father disinherit him. At the door, however, are Carvino and Celia not Carvacio. Mosca leaves to tell Bonario that he should wait in the gallery until his father comes in half an hour. Meanwhile, Carvini explains to Celia the real reason he has brought her to Volponis. Celia begs to be locked in a dark room rather than be made to love Volponi. 
She asks him to go back to his old jealous ways. He tells her that if he thought it a sin, he wouldn't ask her to lie with Balbani. He says he considers it charity. Actress in 5, 6 and 7 continues. Balbani praises Mosca and asks for Celia. Carvino forces Celia nearer to Balbani's bed. Balbani thanks Carvino for offering his wife, but says that he is too far gone for it to do any good. He implies that Carvino will be his heir. Celia says she would rather drink poison or eat burning coals than lie with Balbani. As soon as Mosca and Carvino leave, Valpuni jumps up the coach and tells Celia that it was her beauty that cured him and transformed him into a mound bank earlier in the day. He tells her he is able-bodied and sings a song to prove it. He then tries to seduce her by showing her the fortune, wealth, Celia answers that her innocence is all the wealth she needs and that if she loses it, she will have lost everything. Just as Volbuni becomes impatient and grabs her, Bonario jumps out from the gallery demands that Volbuni let her go. Bonario and Celia exit out the window. Volbuni Volbony laments that he is unmasked, unspirited and dumb. Actress in 8 and 9 continues. Mosca, who has, been, who has been owned by Vonario, enters and apologizes to Volbony. When a knock comes at the door, Volbony fears it is the police, but Mosca tells him to return to his coach. Carbaccio enters. Mosca explains that he was wounded by Bonario, who was looking to kill Carvaccio for disinheriting him. Walter appears and becomes angry because he has heard that Carvaccio will be Balboni's heir. Mosca explains that naming Carvaccio as heir is part of a plan to make Walter rich. Mosca tells Walter that once Benario kills Carvaccio, the law, that is Walter's rim, will take over. Appeased, Walter sends for Carvino to be brought to the Scritino. At the courthouse, Walter and Carvaccio exit in pursuit of Benario and Celia. Act 3 Analysis In Act 3 Scene 1, the themes of parasitism and anima animalization dominate Mosca's soliloquy. Indeed, Mosca refers to himself as a subtle snake. In Act 3 Scene 2, Bonario represents one of the more righteous characters in the play. Those are politic, has good intentions, he is too misguided for his own good. Still here we see that even Bonario is capable of being duped by Mosca. Apparently Bonario's weakness is his fear of losing his father's approval. In Actress in Three, Valpani's love of theatre is again apparent at the opening of the scene. Lady Woodby's in trance confirms that Johnson adheres to Aristotle's unity of time. In, a, in Act 1, Scene 5, Mosca had told Lady would be to return in three hours' time. Now in Act 3, Scene 3, she has, she has returned. In Act 3, Scene 4, Volpony and Lady would be's exchange is both humorous and meaningful. The comedy of the situation centers around its dramatic irony. In terms of deeper meaning, this scene is another display of the dangers of obliviousness. 
Like her husband, the lady would be suffers from an inability to closely observe her situation. Using Valpuni to mock her, Jensen is attempting to show his countrymen how ridiculous and disadvantageous it is to have Lady Udby's lackluster powers of perception. In Actress in 5, 6 and 7, Corvinus in trance marks the first skin in Mosca's plan. So far, Mosca's every move has had its desired effect. However, Corvino has come to the house earlier than Mosca expected. As a result, Mosca is forced to hide Bonario in the gallery so that he won't hear Mosca's dealings with Corvino. In Actress in 7, Corvino and Celia's interaction is primarily an expression of sadomasochistic desires. So what is sadomasochistic? desires. In Elizabethan theater, the language of sadoma sadomasochism was often coupled with the language of love. In Shakespeare, the Merchant of Venice, for example, Bassanio famously tells his lover Portia, I live upon the rack. In the eyes of medieval era Christians, a trial is what legitimized the Romans. In the case of Corvino and Celia, the last shred of romance is trumped by greed. Considering her sadomasochistic desire, Celia's innocence, at least as she professes it, is debatable. By talking the side of pity, Celia she figures herself for redemption, both in the context of Christianity and in the context of the play. In the cold house scene, Johnson chooses to save Celia from punishment because she has proven her commitment to honor and righteousness here in Act 3, Scene 7. Likewise, Bonario is preserved for his determination to do right as evidenced by his rescue of Celia in Act 3, Scene 7. The scene Act 3, Scene 7 then serves as a providing, serves as a proving ground for the upstanding characters in the play. In Act 3, Scene 8 and 9, Valpunia and Mosca begin to accelerate toward their downfall. Mosca, the former master, puppeteer, is increasingly losing control of the place action. The appearance of Carvacio and Walter at the same time marked the second king in Mosca's plan. At this point, he is only barely managing to appease the clients. These scenes mark the beginning of the end. Lesson 2, paraphrase of Act 4. Act 4, Scene 1. The politic and peregrine interests the politic is giving instructions on how to be a gentleman traveler. He says that one must be serious and raised and discreet in conversation. He says that a gentleman must never tell the truth because strangers will thereby take advantage of him. He says to know the proper way to handle utensils and to be interested abstractly in religion, but not to take part in it. He claims that 14 months ago, when he first arrived in Venice, people took him for a native. The so politic then elaborates on some projects, a get-rich-quick schemes which he has come up with. Finally, he boasts that he could sell the state of Italy to the Turks. He shows Peregrine how, in his diary, he takes detailed notes of his every action during every day. 
Act 4, Scene 2 and 3. Lady would be entering with Nano and two of Balpunis servant women finds her politic with Peregrine. Because she believes Mosca's lie, Lady would be suspects that Peregrine is a woman in disguise. Sir Politic cannot pacify her, so he leaves. Mosca enters and tells Lady would be that she is mistaken, that the women he saw with Sir Politic is at the courthouse. He intends, of course, to convince Lady would be that it was Celia he saw with Sir Politic. Lady would be apologizes to Peregrine for the misunderstanding and accompanied by Mosca, Nano, and the two servant women exits the scene. In an aside, Peregrine vows revenge on Sir Politic, who he believes arranged this exchange with Lady would be as a practical joke. Act for Scene 4. At the courthouse, Mosca makes sure that Carvacio, Walter, and Corvino are all familiar with the lie they are going to tell in order to protect themselves and condemn Bonari and Celia, whose story could ruin them. Mosca then assures them separately and secretly that they will inherit Balboni's fortune when it is all said and done. Finally, Mosca tells Walter, the lawyer, that he has another witness who will testify against Celia. This witness is, of course, Lady Udby. Act 4, Scene 5 and 6, Court Scenes. The four advocatory or the judges discuss how atrocious are the crimes of Volboni, Mosca, and Carvacio, which have been brought to their attention by Bonario and Celia. The first avocatory asks why Volpuni is not present and Mosca introduces Walter as his advocate or lawyer. The other three avocatory insists, however, that Volpuni be brought before the court. While Volpuni is being summoned, Walter asks to speak on his behalf. He then accuses Celia and Bonario of having an affair which left Carvacio no choice but to disown Bonario. Act 4, Scene 5 and 6 continues. Walter goes on fabricating and to accuse Bonario falsely of attempting to murder his father and describes how Bonario entered Volpuni's house assaulted Volpuni and wounded Mosca before fleeing the scene with Celia. Bonario speaks up to discredit Walter, but ends up losing favor with the avocatory. When the avocatory asks Walter for proof, Walter produces Carvacci and Curvino who decry the honor of Bonario and Celia respectively. At this, Celia feigns. Mosca steps forward and claims that his wound speaks for itself. As the avocatory leaned toward believing the testimony against Bonario and Celia, Lady Udby appears and seals the deal, defaming Celia for supposedly seducing Sir Politic. Bonario and Celia state that their consciences and heaven are their only witnesses, but the fourth avocatory replies, these are no testimonies. Again, pretending to be feeble, Volpone enters the scrutino or court. Walter argues that in this fragile condition, Volpone could never have committed adultery. Walter concludes his case by arguing that if Bonari and Celia's story is believed, then no one, not even the avocatory themselves, is safe from slander. The avocatory orders Celia and Bonario to be taken away 
and command Walter for his service. Mosca debriefs Carvacio, Carvino, Walter and Medi would be before they all exit. Act for analysis. Scene 1. The significance of Act for Scene 1 in the context of the play is not easily elucidated or elaborated. In contrast to Volponis, the politics get rich, quick schemes and essentially harmless, mostly because he never actually goes through with any of them. In Act 5, Peregrine uses one of Sir Politics' plots as a pretense to, to enact revenge. In Act 4, Scene 2, 3 and 4, Lady Udby continues to prove her gullibility and Mosca sets the stage for his courtroom charade. Temporarily, Mosca seems to have regained control of the situation. Having preyed upon Lady Udby's jealous tendencies, Mosca intends to use her as a character witness against Sally at the scrutiny or court. Meanwhile, Peregrine is an accidental victim. Analytically speaking, the meaning of these scenes lies mostly in the action that they set up. Figuratively, figuratively speaking, these scenes represent the calm before the storm. In Act 4, Scene 5 and 6, Walter delivers a fantastic performance as Volponi's advocate, living up to the reputation which, according to Mosca in Act 2 and Scene 3, earned him Volponi's respect and inheritance. Though Mosca, as well as each of the clans, plays a role in exonerating Volponi, Walter is the one who sticks his neck out the most. He exerts the most effort and takes the greatest risk in being Volponi's advocate because thereby he defies the very justice system which he was sworn to uphold. In terms of the place structure, the sheer weight of his deception eventually leads Walter to confess, which in turn leads Volponi to reveal himself. Thus, in Act 5, sin, yeah, in Act 4, Sin 5, and Sin 6, establish Walter as a catalyst for Volponi and Mosca's downfall which is at this point largely inevitable. While Walter makes his case, Bonario and Sally act almost as bystanders. As they watch the just justice system fail them, they trust themselves completely to God's justice, submitting themselves to the judgment of heaven and conscience. For Johnson, this is the greatest good sacrificing oneself to mankind's falsehoods for the sake of divine truth. According to Johnson, Bonario and Celia's stoicism is not only to be admired but also to be emulated. Lesson 3 Paraphrase of Act 5 Act 5, Scene 1 and 2. In, so, in a soliloquy, Valpony expresses his distaste for his feeble alter ego. While playing the part of the decrepit old man in the courthouse, Valpony began to actually feel some of the symptoms he has been faking for so long. A leg cramp, a dead palsy. Mosca enters and reveals in his triumph, saying that it is a masterpiece. Ironically given that he is being taken for a ride himself. Volponi wonders how Carvacio, Walter, Carvino and Lady Udby have failed to realize they are being played. Volponi drafts a new will 
naming Mosca as his soul hate. He plans to hide and secretly delight in the disappointment of Corvasio, Corvino, Walter and Lady would be. Walter enters and observes Mosca walking about the house, taking inventory of Balboni's possessions. Corvini, Corvino is carried in on a chair and Corvino and Lady would be entered the house as well. Eventually Mosca, Mosca hands them the will and lets them discover the truth for themselves. In a series of asides, Volpony takes pleasure in the body language of his four victims. Mosca pretends not to hear as the four protest. Then one by one, he berates them for their misguided attempts to win Volpony's inheritance. He reminds Lady would be that she often did to sleep with him if he would make her haves. He rebukes Corvino for willing for willingly becoming a cuckold and Carbaccio for disinheriting his son. Finally he scolds Walter for betraying the law that he professes to uphold. Each of them leaves after his reprimand and when they are all gone, Balboni emerges. Balboni emerges from behind the curtains and congratulates Mosca, encouraging him to continue the act in the streets. At the politics house, Peregrine plans his revenge. After gaining entrance to the house in the guise of a statesman, Peregrine warns the politic that the young Englishman he met earlier, that his Peregrine was a spy who informed the Venetian government of his plans to sell the state to the Turks. Peregrine tells him that government officials are on their way to search his house. So politic orders his servants to burn his papers and hides himself in an enormous tortoise shell just as three merchants, disguised as government officials, entered the house. After the merchant discovers a politic under the shell, Peregrine tells politic that he has been made a fool and lives. So politic, fearing that he will now be the subject of common gossip, plans to leave Venice for good. Back at Volpuni's house, Volpuni and Moscar dressed as a court official and a nobleman, respectively. After Volpuni leaves to find out the latest news of the court house, Mosca reveals his plan to betray Volpuni. Mosca sends Androgino, Nano and Castrone out to entertain themselves. He then locks the door and takes the keys, plotting to hold out until Volpuni shares his fortune. So here all the characters are betrayers. They betray with one another. He rationalizes his scheme by saying, No man would construe it a sin. Let his sport pay for it. This is called the fox trap. Act 5 Scene 6, 7, 8, and 9. In the street, Volpony, disguised as a court official, torments Carvashi and Corvino by pretending he has heard news that they inherited a fortune. After the leave, Volpony continues the charade with Walter as his victim. Walter exists and Volpony returns to torture Carvashi and Corvino just as Mosca passes by. Carvino threatens to beat Volpone, who teases him for publicly confessing to be cuckold. They exit as Mosca enters again. Walter enters and idly threatens Mosca while Volpone continues to poke fun. F5, in 10 and 11. At the scrutiny or the court, Court of Justice Walter 
confesses to the advocatory or the judges that he mislead them. Balboni leaves the courthouse. Corvino steps in to prevent Walter from incriminating himself as well as the other three would behave. Walter, however, gives to the advocatory his notes, which describes in detail the lie which Mosca, Corvasio, Corvino, Walter, and Lady would be conspired to con construct. Corvino and Carvasio deny the truth of the notes, saying that Walter is possessed by the devil. In the street, Valpony worries that he has ruined himself by goading Walter to the point of confessing before the court. Nano, Androgeno, and Castane enter and tell Valpony that Mosca has taken the keys to the house. At this point, Valpony realizes that Mosca intends to betray him. Valpony, his master. Act 5, Scene 12. Volpone is still in disguise. He re enters the courthouse and tells Walter that has been sent by Volpone, who is still alive, to tell him that he is hate. Upon hearing this, Walter pretends that he has been possessed all along, denying that he ever wrote the notes. As Mosca enters, Volpone tells him to affirm that Volpone is still alive. Mosca, however, implies that Volpone is dead and is speaking aside to Volpone demands half of his fortune. Volpone at first refuses, then accepts, but Mosca insists on having more. As he is being taken away to be whipped for lying to the court, Volpone takes up his disguise in order to bring Mosca down with him. Immediately, the advocatory free Bonaria and Celia and permanently banish Mosca to the gallows, I mean sentenced to death. Volpone is condemned to prison where he is to lie shackled until he becomes as ill or paralyzed as he always pretended to be. Walter is dis disbarred and Carvacio disinherited. Corvino, after sending Celia home to her father, and paying back three times a dory is to be rowed around Venice wearing a hat with donkeys. At five analysis. Johnson's notion of poetic justice begins to play out as Balboni's fake symptoms become real. I mean he pretended to be sick and eventually uh, he really became sick or paralyzed. Of course, he, even if his condition is psychosomatic, it foreshadows the punishment handed down by the advocatory or the judges in Act 5, Scene 12, or the last scene. And the dramatic irony doesn't stop here. The Balpony still laughs at his clients for being duped shows his unawareness of his own gullibility. Moscow finally articulates his plan to swindle Volpony and again displays his malevolence, coldly weighing his options for deceit. At the end of the play, whereas before Moscow and Volpony were working together, Moscow the subtle snake has now turned against Volpone or betrays his master. As he himself realizes in Act 5, Scene 11, Volpone can no longer rely on Mosca to get him out of trouble. Thus, in Act 5, Scene 12, the last scene of the play, the downfall of both Mosca and Volpone is assured. Thanks to their ex excessive greed or avarice, Mosca and Volpone refuse to share the fortune. Their inability to cooperate is ultimately their undoing, and as Volpone unmasks himself from, the, from his disguise, he reasserts his dominance over Moscow. It is important to note that in determining punishments, the advocate or the judges at the courthouse take Moscow's manual birth into consideration. 
In every case, however, the avocature or the judges use a variation of Hammurabi's code, that is, they follow the principle of an eye for an eye to conclude the play or for justice. To conclude the play, Johnson again chooses an immoral character as his voice. His message, a common device of Elizabeth and theatre, asks him simply for the approval of the audience. Lesson 4 Critical Appreciation of Balbony Benjamin Johnson or Ben Johnson is the third most important name in English drama, after William Shakespeare and Christopher Marlowe. Although he did not achieve mass success with his tragedies, Ben Johnson became very well known for his comedies. Valpony, which is part of his mature comedies, a second period is his most significant and most powerful play. Ben Johnson parodies a material age of gold, referring to the golden age from Greek mythology. Even vices are the main reason for people's moral degradation and the Per perversion of the golden age. He accentuates on people's tendency to deceive others out of greed, vanity, sloth, lust, and hedonism. Valpuni has a main plot and a subplot, which was very typical for plays of the time. The plot of the Valpuni is the main one, and the plot of the Lady would be Sir Politic would be and Perigin is the subplot of this play. The main plot reveals a character's obsessed with greed and the subplot attacks another vice, that of vanity or the pride. It bears the typical characteristics of Johnson's drama. The action takes place over the course of one day in 17th century Venice. Johnson was an Italophile, though back then Venice was considered to be the center of sin and corruption. Characters are historically bound to their place and time, and each one of them represents a human trait or eccentricity. Valpony, whose name means fox, is a rich man who makes good use of his laser time. He is not married and childless, which makes him a perfect target for legacy hunters. He pretends to be sick and on the verge of dying so as to delude people and make them wish for becoming his heirs. So that's a trick. Balbony is the epitome of greed and hedonism. He enjoys pleasure in all of his manifestations and indulges in the way he deceives three gullible men, all of them bearing the names of predatory birds, Walter from Italian meaning Walter, Carvaccio meaning Raven, and Corvino meaning Crow. Kaka. This greed is presented as a characteristic of the society as a whole, but the difference between Volpony and his would be hates is that Volpony is greedy not only for wealth but for gaining more power over his victims. That's the end of the lesson. Thank you very much.